You guys will know by now that if you've watched this channel for any length of time, we pretty much fill this space with everything that I enjoy and perhaps don't enjoy about Lord of the Rings Online, but it's always been about me. Well, today I wanted to share some of your experiences with a game that I fondly love and that many of you have loved for many, many years. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Before we jump into the video, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider leaving a like, subscribing if you're new, and let's get right into it. Well, I think this is as good a spot as any to sit down and as the intro may suggest, read out some of your experiences with Lord of the Rings Online. Now, moving forward, this is going to be a weekly series. So if you guys want to get involved, I will leave my email. Yes, my email. So just don't send things that you don't want shared because they will be shared. I'll leave my email down below that you guys can share your stories to. And hopefully we can have a, a weekly catch up and just spread a bit of positivity in the community as well. So... Without further ado, let's, uh, let's, let's get right into it. Let's do it. So starting from the top, all of these, of course, are anonymous until we get to a point where people want to be named. But the first person says, I absolutely love the background music in this game. I gave this game a proper go last week, got my VIP so I could play on Mordor, which is the new 64-bit server, and I'm loving it. It's so relaxed and so beautiful. I'm terrible at tar uh, tab targeting and keyboard and mouse in general this game just really draws me in. In fact, my son likes to sit next to me when we're in towns and he thinks the voice lines of merchants are hilarious. One thing I absolutely love about this is not only has it drawn you in, but it's also affected another generation age-wise. Like it's brought your, your son into the game to start, you know, even if he's just taken in some of the interactions around the world, because there are so many, by the way, in Lotro, it really is, it's, it's got quite a depth to it. So. Thank you so much for sharing. I love the fact that you're still playing after all this time. I completely understand where you come from about the tab targeting. If you've not really played many MMOs, I'm not saying you haven't, but if you haven't, then it can be a bit of a a bit of a puzzle to get your head around, a bit unnatural. But yeah, I'm glad you're sticking with it because Lotro is a fantastic experience. Next up, we have someone saying that they've been playing computer games since the 80s. And this game actually stands out from all the games they've ever played. They started with the Commodore 64 and later building PC gaming rigs that ran on DOS. Today, of course, we have hardware that pretty much lets us do anything artistically to allow that immersion that we truly love. The real key to making a great game now is making games that are made by people who love what they are making and not just making obscene amounts of money. I'm glad Lord of the Rings is one of those games where people who are running it love it. Thanks for the video. Well, first off, thank you for your comment. I First and foremost, I completely, completely agree with the statement about making games for the love of them and not necessarily focusing on the income side of things. Now, whilst this is a very controversial statement because many people will disagree and many people will say that Lord of the Rings Online, SSG, they have a terrible microtransaction portfolio. In many cases, yes, that is the case, but also in many cases, you don't necessarily have to spend that money. And I feel like for the content that Lord of the Rings Online has brought over the timescale that it has, I do feel like these guys deserve to get paid. It's up to you if you want to spend that money. Yes, there are certain conveniences that you can buy to get ahead of the game slightly, but I do feel like the free content they provide is fantastic. And Lord of the Rings Online is, as you said, it's one of those games that is focused on passion, on Tolkien's lore, and bringing people together, which is what the hope of this video is too. Next up, we have someone saying that I've been playing Lord of the Rings Online for nine years, went on to play other games, but always kept coming back to Lotro. I'm somewhat grounded here now. I have no desire to play anything else. They have done and are still doing an awesome job, upgrading, adding expansions and quests, increasing levels, improving the character creation, adding classes, and much more. It doesn't matter to me how old the game is. It runs good on my MSI Windows 11 laptop, and the graphics are good and clear. What matters most to me is the gameplay. I thoroughly enjoy playing it. I don't have to worry about running or flying through it super fast and fighting super fast all the time. I can relax with it and play and explore at my own pace. There's so much to do in Lotro and it's a huge world. I love it and I don't mind paying at all for the VIP. It's totally worth it. There are some really good benefits that come along with VIP, such as the mailbox, the ability to sell unneeded things from your inventory with an automatic store, access to the auction hall no matter where you are, and access to your storage vault and the shared storage vault 
with access to also the legendary forge when you get your legendary weapons. I totally agree, Lotro feels like home. And I totally agree with you. This comment was clearly off of the back of the Lord of the Rings Online feels like home video, which has had some great response. So thank you so much for that. And everything that you've said there is exactly what I tried to put across in a video previously about whether you should purchase VIP. And what you've discussed there regarding, where was it, the world? Yeah, so the world being huge and you can take your time. That is probably, to me, one of the more important factors of playing this game, is that you can take your time, you can relax, there is no rush. Yes, there is end game and there's raids and instances that you can do, but there is so much out there in the world building. So thank you for sharing and playing for no over nine years is fantastic. So I'm so glad that you're still with the game. Next up, we have someone saying that I've played Lotro for 16 years. It is not a game, quote unquote, but instead you are living another life in Middle Earth. I love that. I love that. You are living another life in Middle Earth. Modern MMOs have lost this and they are nothing but secluded zones where you just go from one quest to another. With them, you have no reason to live in the world. You are just there to play a game. Damn, that, yeah. W what more can I say? That a lot of people bash this game for its inability to perform visually, okay? And it's, it's visual fidelity, which we've covered multiple times. Let's not get into it now. But the overall world building, the questing, the moment to moment gameplay, the seamless transitions towards most areas that you're just, if you were to walk in a straight line, you get very, very little um, secluded zones, if if any, actually, that I can think of, unless you're entering a building. And I feel like that does wonders for immersion. One thing I always used to love about reading the books or watching the films is seeing these characters and visualizing these characters physically walking from one space to another. That's what I really struggle with, with Rings of Power. Everything in Rings of Power seems to happen like that. You know, in, in the films, people always argue that, oh, they've spent the past two hours just walking well it's no shock that middle earth is a massive space it's not going to be covered in two seconds so i love that i love the fact that you've said that you are living another life inside of middle earth and that's, that's exactly what most people want the next person says i think you nailed it referring to the topic of the video i just started on angmar about a month ago i'm a 60 year old tolkien nut and i've always avoided this game as i did not want to be disappointed what a poor choice. Does it feel like home? Yes, I completely agree. I completely understand why in the back of your mind, you would have thought your first thought would be, I don't know if I really want to try this game, especially if you're a Tolkien nut and you've, you know, you've gone through the, the books, the movies, uh, a game is, is a very, very hard thing to port yourself across to, which I do totally understand. And, and I think also what's really impressive is the fact that this game has such a broad scope on age i know many 20 year olds that play this game and i've seen people as old as 70 75 still playing lord of the rings online which is just incredible to me and, and that's because it's not just a game as we've mentioned before it's an it's an experience it's a life experience if you are a tolkien nut and all you've lived through your whole life is the workings the um the recitement of tolkien's work to be able to actually port yourself digitally into that world is second to none. So thank you so much for sharing. Last but not least, we have someone who's been playing on Angmar the last few weeks and says that Lord of the Rings Online is very atmospheric. It's a slow paced game that draws you in. You can do relaxing quests in the Hobbit areas or more combat heavy quests in others. There is no pressure to rush to end game, which is so nice after years of classic WoW. I've been enjoying it. There was a reason why I wanted to end on that comment. Lord of the Rings Online, I feel like, for whatever reason, has always fallen into World of Warcraft's shadow. Obviously, World of Warcraft, by the by, is a more popular game. But I do feel like a lot of people call Lord of the Rings Online a WoW clone. So to see people who have played World of Warcraft now take a step back, try the Lotro experience, and thoroughly enjoy it because they are fundamentally very, very different games. I've personally tried World of Warcraft multiple times, and I can't get on board with the artwork. I cannot get immersed in a somewhat cartoony slash unrealistic world. Yes, Lord of the Rings is fantasy, but to me it's grounded fantasy. And that really sells it to me. So the fact that you've come back over to Lord of the Rings, there is no pressure, you're absolutely right. There is no real rush to endgame. The, the journey in many ways, without sounding really cliche, is 
it is the end game you know the, the whole game the whole game is the end game depending on how you wanted to play it so thank you so much for sharing all right guys and girls i think that will draw us to the end of the first part of this series i guess i hope you've enjoyed i hope it's been a bit something a little bit different i just kind of wanted to make something that bands people together there can be a lot of negativity when it comes to online spaces and we've all got so many positive comments about this game so i just wanted to make a, a safe creative space that we can just bring people together share stories um it doesn't always have to be super positive if there's certain things that you don't like about the game we can make episodes about that but if you are interested i'll leave a link to my email down below send me some of your stories obviously if you send stuff across that i really can't share it won't be shared so yeah that being said thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one